The pofery is underway at Taike Kainga, a Maori community high upon a cliff above the Wanganui River. Pofuries were just the norm. That's how you enter a marae. Whether you are coming here for trouble or friendly, you still go through this process. The elder is Matt, the warden of this hut in the Wanganui National Park, where we're all staying the night as we paddle towards the sea. The kaikaranga, or caller, is his seven-year-old daughter, Maddie. United States of America. And it's Andrew. I'm here with Allison. We are both Kaurara walkers. We are walking the length of New Zealand and exploring. Its culture, we participate beauty. by sharing who we are and where we're from. And then the we sing. For oh, beautiful, for spacious skies, for amber waves of grey. You're listening to the P Rag Unfiltered Adventures of the Blissful Hiker. I'm Allison Young, the blissful hiker, sometime professional flutist, sometime voice artist, and full-time pedestrian. A bit like the small backpacking essential of the same name, the P-Rag is about sharing the unglamorous but vital truth of empowerment as badass people who really don't need permission to blaze our own trails in this journey we call life. Thanks so much to Lecky Trekking Poles for supporting the P-Rag podcast. If you want to be a blissful hiker, leckies should be in your hands. Also, Bolega, makers of the best blister-resist, non-slouching, foot-massaging socks for the long haul. You can win a pair of Bolega socks. Just like and share the PRAG page on Facebook, and you'll be entered to win. The deadline is Boxing Day. That's December 26th. All you have to do is like the PRAG page on Facebook and share it, and you'll be automatically entered to win a pair of Bolega socks. So why do you want to go through the wood and the sandals? Just so you tied to the wood. I'll arrive at Tieka Kainga after two days of paddling down this wondrous river. It's kind of crazy. The Te Araroa can be walked the entire way, but why would you want to skip this five-day adventure paddling down about 100 miles of the Rhine of New Zealand? You've got a bow rope to tie your boat in at night. That's on the front of your boat. Yes. You all got the baler, the little scoopy thing to scoop out the water. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You all got two paddles. Zena and Jono from Tamara Nui Canoe Hire arrive, and they have us unpack all of our carefully packed gear and then repack it again in barrels. It's a bit of a drama as we hurriedly reorganize and get another briefing and small canoe lesson in the thick mud at Wade's Landing at Fakahoro. Holding your paddle, you have your thumb under, hand over the top, and a nice low grip. Some people paddle and their hands will hit the side, so you can have a bit higher if you want to, just not up here. The Wanganui River journey is considered one of New Zealand's great walks. It's protected, and it's filled with tourists, a very different feel for us long-distance walkers who are used to isolated trails, not to mention how odd it feels sitting rather than walking. Back person, make sure you keep your loud communication. A lot of people in the rapids go, paddle, 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 swap, paddle, 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 swap. Yeah. It's also a river with rapids. And I'm lucky to have Andrew, who's a reasonably skilled paddler as our canoe captain. He turned 24 yesterday. Now, that's nearly 30 years younger than me to the day. So if you do manage to tip out, don't worry. The first thing you worry about, or the first thing you think about, is your partner. You want to make sure they're okay and they're good. If they're good, then you go for your paddle. For some reason, they float insanely fast. (laughs) Apparently, one in three flip, and we leave it to the Croatians with Bohan, a competitive whitewater rafter, to be the first to tip their canoe. They're taking the rapids in front of us seemingly purposely from the side, while we bump and splash straight into the V, only spinning sideways once, but thankfully managing to correct. After those first riffles, we float on a serene and glassy surface, only the sound of our paddles gently pushing us forward. The sun just touches the bank. A cool and refreshing air-conditioning breeze flows through the deep gorge of bush, the steep walls plastered with moss and ferns. Deep crevices reveal themselves, one after another, 
carved over time by water and now filled with noisy, but often hidden, waterfalls. It's not only grand and thrilling to be here, there's something spiritual that grabs me instantly. Only a year before I arrived, the New Zealand Parliament passed legislation acknowledging the Wanganui as a legal person, a living being, with all the rights, powers, duties, and liabilities that entails. And I feel what the original inhabitants must have felt, that the water, the cliffs, and the atmosphere itself breathes. We land on a rocky shore for a break, and I open a can of beer to accompany my lunch. Andrew's the first American I've traveled with, and we talk easily about everything from family to movies to work. He tells me he also had a bad vibe about the other group of hikers back on the timber trail. Yet even as a young man, he's filled with equanimity. People are going to be jerks, he tells me. I just don't let them ruin my experience. (laughs) Wisdom out of the mouth of babes. I reserved a bunk at the John Cool hut, but it feels like a scene from Oliver. So I set my tent with the others, and I take my dinner to the river's edge to catch a breeze and look for Pekka Pekka, the rare, lesser, short-tailed bat and the only native mammal to New Zealand. A flurry of cackling swallows dive-bomb our perch before the last of the twilight, and three bats flutter in and out of our view, stalling momentarily to catch a meal mid-flight. You're listening to The P-Rag, Unfiltered Adventures of the Blissful Hiker. Through sharing my stories of walking long-distance trails as a solo, middle-aged female hiker, I hope I can empower you to grab hold of your dreams and hike your own hike, too. You can subscribe to The P-Rag wherever you get your podcasts. And if you listen on Apple, I'd love it if you could take the time to leave a review. I do have a little post-Christmas present for you, a pair of Bolega socks, the best socks that I use when I thru-hike. You can enter to win by liking and sharing the PRAG podcast page on Facebook, and the deadline is December 26th. Our tents are damp in this foggy morning, set on a staircase of carved terraces Inca style. Yesterday, Andrew and I spied rock formations that appeared made by hand, huge hewn blocks as if a wall around the river. His passion is science fiction, so it got us fantasizing of ancient alien civilizations here in this last inhabited patch of the world. The more pork the New Zealand owl hooted through the still night until I was awakened by David's excited descriptions of climbs to Alex and the Croatians, as well as advice to slow down the pace for the South Island, which he completed last year. I really wanted him to shut up and give me a few more moments of sleep. But I'm going to miss David and these guys. They're going to go on further than Andrew and me today to get to Wellington before the month is over. That definitely won't be me moving fast, with the Tararua Range to come, a notoriously dangerous crossing, much more remote and difficult than the Tongariro. To prepare for bad weather days, I may have to wait out in a hut. I'll carry extra food, but of course that slows me down on the steep ascents. Through hiking is a balancing act, and that difficult range is still a few weeks away, right after Christmas. Right now, the river is ahead, and the only part of me that's tired is my bony bottom. The Wanganui tends to flood, so it's a long haul up and down to the canoes in stages with six heavy barrels of gear and food. But we're up and out before anyone in the hut stirs, and the emptiness on the river makes it feel like it's all ours. People would walk miles to see just one of these massive waterfalls tumbling out of canyons or seeping down the bare rock. And yet, we get hundreds of them, tree ferns grabbing hold to any chink in the cliff, 
their fronds stretching out over the abyss. It's a day of rapids, then calm, then rapids again. Reflected clouds and bright blue sky on the latte-colored water. A jetty appears just as a smelly jet boat arrives filled with tourists. We stop here, too, for the 20-minute walk uphill to the bridge to nowhere. It was built in the 1930s, a concrete monstrosity nearly swallowed by the bush as it spans the deep gorge made by the Mangaporua stream. It was built with high hopes and meant for cars to bring prosperity to the region. But alas, this area is prone to washouts, so the farmers deserted it and the roads were never built. We take pictures, then climb back in our canoe and paddle into the wind, screaming up the canyon and almost sending us into the piles of huge logs and debris on the edge of the river. The process repeats at Tieke Kainga, landing in deep mud, untying our barrels, and carrying them up two at a time to our flat camp spot high above the river. We're met right away by little Maddie, a Maori girl with a dimpled grin, barefoot, shorts, orange t-shirt, and aviator sunglasses resting on her head. I'm fairly certain those glasses are her older sister Charlie's. And to Charlie's amusement, Maddie can't stop talking, proudly telling me all about this place, the plants that grow here, how long they stay in the summer, and what she does with her days. The three of us hike back down to the river and take a swim in a shallow area unaffected by the strong current. And then it's the big excitement of the afternoon when the helicopter arrives to make a delivery. Firewood, cooking gas, even a riding lawnmower. There's no other way to get here besides the river. When the National Park was established, this bit of land was occupied by Maori. The Department of Conservation, or DOC, wanted to build a hut and camping sites right here for the ever-increasing tourist industry, but they were at an impasse. Peace finally prevailed in a kind of shared responsibility, though clearly the Maori won the day, and they made their point by painting the roof of their marae, or the meeting house, the exact same shade of blue to match the tarps that Doc used during the dispute. I find it all a little bit amusing, and yet this was very serious business. The Wanganui is their Awatupua, a river of sacred power, an ancestor. It's not enough to simply recognize the river as having rights. What matters is the orientation of people to the natural world, a sacred regard for creation, and an ethic of responsibility to the whole. There's a saying in Maori that the small streams and the large streams flow together. It's a metaphor for community that all is intrinsically linked. You guys will walk up in one unit. When you get to the seats on the left-hand side, you, you stand there. You come straight towards me where I'm sitting. I'll be sitting on the marae side. You guys sitting on the manuhiri side. Manuhiri means friends. You get there, you pause, that's a moment of silence for your ancestors and my ancestors. And then you proceed to sit down. Females in the back, males in the front of the seats, okay? And so it makes sense that when we are invited to the pophory, a welcoming into the community of Taeke Kainga, that we identify ourselves by both our mountain and our river. To see why you're here. And normally Māori warriors would come out. Three of them would come out, one in the middle. Two the the sky turns a deep purple, and a few bats flutter above as we return to the little shelter next to our camp spots to make dinner. Maddie returns, flashing her adorable smile, and shows me a picture she drew of me, dressed in my hiking outfit and silly hat, my hair like straw sticking out the sides, and a big toothy grin. She tells me good night, and I know... I probably won't see her again, so I give her a hug. When we pull apart, she reaches into her pocket and pulls out a stone, black and smoothed by the water. It's pakohe, a metamorphosed and hardened mudstone that was used for centuries because it could be sharpened into a tool. 
She tells me it has healing properties. Does she know that I need to be healed? Or is this just one of those things that seven-year-olds do, sharing something precious to them with someone they like? I thank her and take the stone into the alley coop, massaging its cool softness in my palm, and knowing I'll carry this pakohe with me every time I hike. It'll never sound as easy coming from me as it does from Maddie, but here's a try. Ko au te awa, ko te awa, ko au. I am the river, and the river is me. If you enjoy the P-Rag, you can subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And if you listen at Apple, leave a rating and review. This really helps others find the podcast. You can also find the P-Rag on Facebook. Like and share, and you'll be automatically entered to win a pair of Bolega socks. Again, just like and share the P-Rag on Facebook, and you'll be entered to win a pair of Bolega socks. Those are the socks that I use on my through hikes. Coming up next week, Andrew and I continue our journey down the Wanganui, hitting three sets of rapids, including the 50-50. So named because 50% of those who dare enter get flipped. I am not going to tell you what happens, but let's just put it this way. We bailed 26 gallons of water that day. Until then, my friends, kia kaha and happy trails. <laughs>